Hello, Srinath. Uh, you have been in so many roles overall. You are a very strong chess player. You have trained so many players. You have also trained uh, the Indian national team. But today, I want to talk to you as the trainer of uh, Arjun Erigasi. Uh, and uh, someone who has been making the headlines, making the waves uh, in Indian chess. He's reached India number 2, 2735 has been his highest ELO. Uh, so I want to understand your relationship with him. How did it begin? What has happened? So can we start from uh, when was the first time you heard about Arjun? Uh, I think the first time I took notice of Arjun was uh, when he played in this under-16 Olympiad. Uh, this was in 2017. The Olympiad was in India. So just like this uh, senior Olympiad, that under-16 Olympiad had three Indian teams, uh, if I remember right. And Arjun was on the first board of the second team. Mm. And uh, I remember because... Uh, I think I'm getting a few details wrong here. I don't know if he was on the first board. But why I remember that quite well is because uh, Nihal was playing in the Olympiad. And I was his coach at that time already. And uh, Nihal and Arjun played each other. And I think Nihal was white, but Arjun managed to draw very comfortably. And uh, Nihal was much higher rated than Arjun at that time. Arjun was around 2300 and Nihal was, I think, already at uh, 2500. So that is where I took notice of him and uh, already by that time Nihal held him in uh, quite high regard and uh, he thought that he was quite underrated. They had been playing together uh, in a lot of these age group events by that time already and uh, it was mostly uh, uh, quite a lot of draws between them or of some kind of uh, mutual respect already by that time. So this is where I first heard of him and uh, the first and also the next time I think was uh, in the Kolkata Open, which uh, I won in 2018. And uh, at that time I was playing with uh, a half point lead. Again, uh, apologies if I get any of these details wrong, but I think I was having a half, half point lead and uh, Nigel was chasing behind me uh, in the last round. And uh, Arjun was playing against Nigel Short. Yeah. And uh, Arjun needed a draw for his GM norm. And uh, if I remember right, he achieved that quite confidently, mm. thereby making his GM norm and also helping me win the tournament quite clearly, not letting Nigel catch up with me. And uh, yeah, so this was the second instance. So I had already uh, started to... Uh, respect him more and more over this period of time. Uh, also, another draw against uh, Nihal happened during that Kolkata Open tournament. Although Nihal had the black pieces this time. Mm. And uh, it was a pretty quick draw in a Slav defense exchange variation. So this was the second instance. And uh, then, yeah, the third uh, instance was uh, where we interacted for the first time. This was the world under 16 uh, Olympiad in 2018 and had uh, went as the coach of the team in Turkey. And uh, we didn't have any pre-tournament camps. It just, uh, we just met directly at Delhi airport, which was like an assembly point. We all reached one night before and our uh, flight was uh, sometime in the morning, something like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. And all of us reached at various times in the night. Uh, 9 p.m., 10 p.m., something like that. So we had one uh, whole night to spend in the airport to bond with. And uh, that's where I met Arjun for the... Interacted with Arjun for the first time. Also with uh, Devya. And uh, that was a very memorable tournament for uh, all of us, I think, at least for me. Uh, we uh, got together immediately. And uh, I think some of Arjun's first words were uh, that uh, maybe he should play on the third board for the Indian team in the tournament. And his reasoning was that uh, uh, he could just, you know, score uh, off the third board against relatively lower rated opponents. And uh, I took a while to consider that, but I told him 
not a good idea because i think you can do the same on the first board score mm-hmm. heavily and uh, those were the exact words he used that he can be on the third board and score heavily i said uh, i think you can do the same on the first board also so i prefer you to uh, be on the first board which he did yeah and it was a pretty yeah exactly he did uh, he did extremely well he i think gained something like 20 23 points in the tournament and uh, it was a very uh, interesting tournament it had some pretty strong players alidesa was there yeah and uh, abdi satro sc penko exactly and uh, like this olympia that was also won by the uzbek team led by abdi satro and uh, yakub ayev sindro uh, shamsidan four of the five players were uh, oh, the same nice so this was a 2018 under 16 uh, uzbek team and uh, arjun started a bit slow i think he uh, had a pretty bad first game draw against a lower rated player but uh, pretty soon he started picking up pace and uh, there was this rest day after which we played against uzbekistan we had both dropped one point at that time and this was a pretty important encounter uzbekistan was the first seed and uh, uh, if we won that we had some pretty good chances of uh, gold medal so we played against uzbekistan and uh, Arjun at that time was a complete 1D4 player. He played only 1D4, within which he had a pretty limited repertoire back in that time. And uh, uh, there was this game against uh, Shan Sargisian where he uh, didn't try, uh, didn't really get much with White and had to make a draw. Um, he played for Armenia. So you had all these uh, top juniors playing for different teams in this Olympiad. And... Uh, Uh, against Abdi Satro, he was playing uh, Berlin at that time, I think. And uh, I remember it vividly because uh, I managed to teach him uh, one E4 in uh, this one full rest day. Both Arjun and Sankalp against uh, Abdi Satro and Sindaro. Mm. And uh, Arjun learned it all, all the different setups in Rylopus. uh mainly preparing against one E4, E5. All the different setups. It was like a... a uh, crash course of rylopers in one day if only, and if only the next day in recorded it yeah that could have been very nice i wish i wish <laughs> if only chess base in news are on in the tournament <laughs> so so then what happened yeah after you taught them yeah i think we were uh, zeroing on our own z7 berlin and uh, Arjun played this fantastic game against Abdi Satro, which was very similar to an Anand Grishchuk game in uh, Berlin in terms of the strategic aspect. Uh, he took this uh, knight on c6, bishop under c6, and then he played around the c5 square. It was almost like a mirror copy of the Anand Grishchuk game. That was, I was so pleased with how he managed to effortlessly defeat a top junior. And uh, Sankalp also had a good portion against Sindaro in uh, one of these unusual lands against uh, Roy Lopez, but uh, uh, he couldn't uh, convert his game. So we lost 3-1, but Arjun defeated Abdi Satro in that game very nicely. And then uh, that same evening, it was a double round day after the rest day, we played against Russia. And uh, at that time, SC Penko was the highest rated player in the tournament, rated even higher than Ali Reza. with the black pieces again uh, arjun just confidently outplayed him and uh, we defeated russia 3-1 that was uh, very important for us in winning the silver medal so that was my first interaction with arjun uh, arjun a uh, chess player first close interaction as a coach and uh, i was very impressed with what i saw he had amazing chess ability a fantastic strategic understanding Uh, there was a kind of ease in which uh, he played so uh, the game just flowed and uh, his biggest weakness at that time was the openings where he was just very bad at that time and uh, he uh, played uh, he had a very limited and narrow repertoire in which he was also not all that deep so this was one singular point where uh, 
there was a major deficiency and uh, something has improved a lot over the years where, where would you say has arjun got this kind of this the ease with which he plays you know because you started working with him after a point like after this olympiad and so on uh, but before that from where did he get this uh, sort of skills with him uh i'm not uh, entirely sure uh, this is a bit of a this is something i think that can only be guessed at best at this point it's a uh, a clear solution or uh, a clear solution doesn't exist it's also like one of these questions of uh, one of these questions like how are these juniors growing so quickly how did they get so good um a, a lot of it is probably uh, due to how they trained when they were uh, uh growing up in their formative years and uh, a combination of the training plus their uh, natural talent but uh, for example with someone like arjun and uh, nihal has well they had uh, incredible strategic understanding from a very young age and uh, these these are things that took me years to understand a lot of these things like for example the things that took me uh, about 8 to 10 years to develop with uh, a lot of hard work and effort uh they had uh, acquired it in about 2 to 3 years that was the difference in timeline mm-hmm. and uh, i'm not quite sure how they managed to do it as far as i understand uh, it involved uh, just playing a lot of games and uh, observing a lot of games you know going uh, uh, looking at games and playing a lot of games but uh, i i don't i don't know how exactly uh, did they get these uh, particular skills now one uh, a few things i understand is uh, uh, your style is basically what you're trained to pay attention to so uh, uh, someone who pays a lot of attention to solving a lot of tactics i believe they develop kind of uh, tactical style and someone who pays attention to looking over these uh, strategical nuances just you know uh things like pawn structure and piece maneuvering uh they tend to have more of a st- more to the strategic style i think uh, this uh what what you are trained to pay attention to in your formative years it kind of sets your uh, style but uh, i haven't quite gone back in the years to try and examine and understand uh, what exactly they did in their uh, very initial years mm-hmm. got it you know uh, when i have heard you a few times talking about arjun's style of play you have mentioned about uh, one aspect of him that he is very much attached to material you know like he goes after pawns he when he sees a pawn he grabs it and so on but that's maybe just one part of his style so if you have to kind of explain his playing style uh because let's say when when it comes to nihal we know that he's very good at te- technical chess when it comes to gukesh we know that he likes to sort of complicate things he's very good at calculation uh with prag it's more like uh, this natural flowing style uh, somehow what is it with arjun according to you? uh i think arjun uh, at the start he was uh, leaning more towards uh, a strategic style uh he just had a better strategic understanding uh, over the years he has become much more universal he has become very good at openings he has become uh, he has excellent calculation skills fast calculation skills uh i think this was also mentioned uh, by one of his earlier coaches uh, mikelovski in uh, the 2018 interview with you uh that he's very good at calculation it stood out uh wishy mentioned it later that he had the super later calculation he sees the last move in the variation yes. so uh he combines his strategic understanding with uh, precise calculation i think that's how i would uh, put it in one sentence so uh how did your relation with him start growing and also because at some point you were also uh i mean with nihal you have been working since he was around 2200 or so uh so you were always there and nihal has been sort of a 
we don't say like a competitor he's also been friend with arjun but also competing with him so how did you manage to sort of uh, take care of those aspects uh so i think it has been very helpful that uh, nihal and arjun have been uh, very good friends until the, to this day and uh, after 2018 uh, i wasn't immediately able to pay a lot of attention to arjun because uh, uh i was traveling with nihal full time in 2019 and uh, nihal was just uh, 15 years old at that time his uh, parents couldn't take a lot of time away from their work um, both of them doctors and uh, the kerala state government so a lot of 2019 was spent uh, traveling with nihal but uh, at that time i tried to get in on uh, time with arjun and nihal whenever possible so we had uh, i think almost a month long camp in uh, uh, some part of 2019 and uh, although i couldn't give a lot of personal attention to arjun at that time i think just uh, putting nihal and arjun together uh, by itself was uh, quite beneficial to both of them they got the best of each other and uh, arjun was also not quite uh, decided towards a professional chess playing career at that time uh, as far as i can remember and uh, i think that changed uh, sometime around the lockdown uh, 2019 wasn't a great year for arjun he also had an uh, accident and uh, i think he went through some 3 4 months of inactivity he didn't play yeah, a lot i remember and that uh, the times he played because of the accident he couldn't travel to even this uh, microsense kramnik training camp uh, and uh, you i mean i spoke to him because i was the one who was managing uh, a lot of things like who would go there and so on and arjun seemed like so calm yeah i for me it was like oh my god he cannot travel there but he was just okay i cannot come and then in the end uh, when i spoke to him he was like oh if there are some notes uh, if you can send me that would be nice you know he, he it just felt like what his emotions i'm sure he was disappointed that he couldn't travel or he was uh, he had this accident he never let it show yeah absolutely he uh, appears very calm and uh, i think he did attend the camp uh, with kramnik and gelfand yeah. yeah 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 next year right yeah so the next year happened the 2020 lockdown happened and uh, after the lockdown no uh, so uh, till pre lockdown uh, i was uh, traveling almost exclusively with nihal and uh, we had a lot of plans post lockdown to uh, starting from april because i think nihal had some exam from uh, march after, uh, from january after his vacancy i don't immediately remember but vacancy uh, 2020 was uh, I I accompanied Nihal to Vacancy 2020 for the challenges, and then in February and March there were no tournaments. He didn't play Aeroflot uh, that year. And uh, when I was when we were just returning from Vic, that's when uh, news about COVID hit for the first time. And uh, initially, it didn't look so threatening. It, we thought it would just come and go like any other uh, uh, viral. In, disease that we had seen over the years but yeah uh, the lockdown happened and after one or two months it became clear that nothing was going to uh, resume for a considerable while and uh, then i started spending a bit more time with uh, arjun post uh, after the lockdown started we started spending some time uh, in 2020 i started to uh, give him a bit more personal attention and uh, from there on it started uh, uh, growing more and more so so from 2020 you started to work with him and uh, you know he was around 25 60 or so and uh, all of a sudden this huge rise and now within a year and a half or, or let's say couple of years 
he's reached 27 35 which is just uh, unbelievable what has happened and everyone's just looking at this and uh, wondering what happened are you also surprised or you are like yeah this kind of expected uh, to be honest i was a bit surprised with uh, both gukesh and arjun's growth because i mean uh, you know for sure that they are going to have this uh, stupendous rise but uh, i predicted it one year later and uh, i mean when i uh, look back i had this very uh, whatsapp conversation with one of my friends where i uh, thought gokesh and arjun would do something like this but my timeline was off by about a year they managed to get there a year faster and uh, it was unbelievable uh, especially uh, somehow uh, i felt that gokesh and arjun were kind of feeding off each other's uh, competitive success and when one person uh, achieves something astonishing it gives the self belief not because they think they are better than the other person but because they know what that person is capable of and what uh, this person is capable of as well like for example uh, i think uh, with the australian cricket team mark taylor and steve waugh they made their uh, they started their career off at around the same time and i remember uh, steve waugh telling something like how much confidence he got when he saw mark taylor score his first century not because he thought he was better than uh, mark taylor but they had grown up together and steve waugh knew what he was capable of and what steve waugh was capable of as well and his fir- first century also came very quickly after that so i think they have been uh, kind of feeding off each other's competitive success as far as this year is concerned yeah and uh, they have moved uh, strength to strength and they have reached now 2700 plus uh, at some point i was of this mindset that in order to reach this rating you have to play super tournaments you can't just do it through open events but that seems to be uh, somehow now challenged yeah that view point do you do you think so as well yeah i think they have changed uh, a lot of view points and uh... we have had uh, this kind of break to talents uh, i think quite a bit but uh, i'm not sure if we have seen it in uh, such numbers we had uh, i mean we always had uh, people like uh, for example rajjabo was a prodigy he defeated uh, gary caspro and uh, vishi when he was a teenager world number 1 and number 2 at the time uh, we magnus and sergey were uh, astonishingly good in their teenage we we had these uh, offshoots of talent but i don't think we have had these uh, number of people in one generation uh, we have uh, these juniors from india we have these juniors from uzbekistan and uh, they have just challenged the status quo and uh, they they have i think they have played the kind of chess that you see from the absolute elite but with the energy of youth mm. and uh, they have challenged a number of things uh, they have even i would say you know they have even questioned uh, the current uh, system of invitations where uh, the best 10 players largely get invited but uh, this olympiad for example gokesh showed that uh, you don't have to be someone in the top 10 to play chess of that level and uh, you can beat some of the best players in the world Uh, despite not even being 2700 so there are also some pretty remarkable players uh, rated below 2700 and uh, yeah uh, it's it's just been unbelievable and eye opening at many different levels right but do you think that uh, having some sort of super tournaments in india could help them because uh, outside there are only so many events and there are so many more talents and they also the tournament where it is hosted try to see that they are local players also get the exposure so do you think that uh, india should host more super events absolutely absolutely and i think already the tata steel uh, chess rapid and blitz is uh, uh, it's a very useful and important tournament at this point one of the most challenging uh, aspects in uh, continuing to grow is uh, 
the difficulty in playing against a stronger opposition higher rated opposition like for example if you are a 2500 it's not so hard to find opponents rated up to 2650 or 2600 and uh, it's very important for you to uh, play such players in your uh, process of growth because it is only when you are uh, playing these players that you are kind of forced to stretch yourself and uh, that stretching is one of the important processes in how an individual improves as a chess player uh in that sense uh, i think that is also one of the things that the current generation has benefited from i remember uh, they started playing uh, i mean in my entire career i played one game one classical game with a player about 2700 to put things under perspective and uh, and nihal started playing against hikaru when he was uh, 14 years old or 15 years old mm. or uh, even earlier it was 2017 so he was 12 or 13 when he played hikaru the first time and although they were, these were uh, p plus 0 games uh hikaru shows a very high level even with the stam control so you have to be very sharp tactically you make one small tactical miss and uh, whatever you have built up is lost instantly uh, you also have to make some very decent strategic moves you have to overall play a, a very strong chess game in order to not get ad- adopted by hikaru you know to even score a single win uh, you have to show a very high uh, level of chess in a very short time and uh, that is that was one of the things and also the champion chess tour gives access to the juniors to play against uh, elite opposition again uh, rapid time control but generally what i've noticed is you start winning in the shorter time controls and then you win in the rapid and then it just translates to classical chess the chess strength is kind of uh, um it feeds off each other it's not it's very uh, it's very unusual that someone is very good at blitz but they're not so good at classical and uh, especially at the elite level right so um, i think already in terms of opportunities they have these opportunities but uh, not many classical games against uh, people above 2750 2800 unless they get invitations invitations uh, it's not so easy because you have already uh, at least three juniors competing against each other four right. uh also with nihal and uh, usually at best only one of these juniors are going to play in any particular tournament abroad they have to pick between gukesh arjun prag nihal right now and uh, yeah so uh not everyone is going to get that opportunity which is uh, which can be addressed if we have uh, super tournaments in india classical super tournaments absolutely and what would you say is your role in the in arjun's career at this point of time is it like a hardcore chess trainer that you discuss chess more with him or is it more like you are you are like a, a friend uh, also just guiding him through the path and making sure that he gets all the elements in place for his growth um i think it's much more than the chess aspect uh we uh, when uh, we talk we talk about uh, pretty much everything not just uh, the chess aspects and uh, the conversations are usually informal and casual so it's it's more uh, more like a friend than a coach coach kind of relationship and uh, as far as uh, my role in arjun's uh, growth has been uh, i i think i was probably one of the very first persons to understand how exceptional he was how much of a gigantic talent he was and uh, i remember telling arjun himself so many times that he can do a lot better than uh, where he is right now uh, he has to get better in openings he has to get uh, better uh, i mean if he can improve his openings he would uh, be a very strong player that was my impression around uh, 2019 i remember he played this game against uh, adivan in china and uh, he lost with the white pieces and us quite unhappy with uh, how he played because uh, 
I thought he could play a lot better than that. And the kind of position that he had, I felt that he was stronger than IB1. Even though they had like a 130-140 rating point difference at that time. But uh, Arjun didn't quite feel so. And he was in fact a bit intimidated by... Uh, People like uh, Adiban and uh, the other top Indian players at that time, Vedat and Adiban and these players. But uh, somehow at some point, uh, these things transformed. And uh, the players that he was intimidated by, he started playing confidently against them. He started beating them. And after years of repeating that uh, he's incredibly good, he started believing it himself, I think, sometime around 2020, 2021. Mm. There was a big shift. Uh, I remember he lost this uh, Super Juniors Cup in 2020 against Nihal, the final. Although it was a very closely contested match, the margin was big, but very closely contested match. And then uh, the next year, he uh, won this Indian qualifier for the Champion Chess Tour. He uh, yes. defeated uh, Nihal in the very first round. It was between Arjun and Nihal in the very first round. And uh, at that time, he already felt like a transformed player. He defeated Nihal quite confidently. And uh, then, uh, yeah, he uh, won the other games. Then he defeated uh, Adiban in the finals, overcoming uh, one of his uh, uh, psychological, uh, psychologically difficult opponents. And um, then the way he played in the champion chess tour was a revelation. But... Uh, yeah, uh, I felt that I realized his uh, enormous strength at least a few years before even he did. Amazing. Yeah, it, all it takes is someone to believe in you and then, you know, uh, things can open up. Uh, there are few things about Arjun which have struck me. Uh, there was once uh, when he was very young in 2015, I think it was, or 2016, Aerofloat Open when he decided to play in the A group. Uh, and he lost like seven games in a row uh, uh, and he was like zero out of seven uh, and then recently when he took this call of uh, quitting his college uh, and saying that you know now I need to focus on chess and that I think uh, when I interviewed him he said it was because I was not progressing at the speed that I wanted I made this decision so while he does look like a very calm individual I think he also has this some kind of a fiery thing inside him. Yeah, this determination or this kind of some. Can you throw some light on that? Because we always see him as this boy who is very calm. Uh, but also in one interview, he said that uh, when someone said, oh, I got so upset that I would uh, do something after a loss or maybe it was Gukesh and uh, not Arjun. But does he get angry after a loss or does he break things or something of that sort? Uh, I haven't seen him uh, rage like that with breaking things and stuff. But of course, he gets very upset after a loss like uh, anyone else. And uh, he has this incredible will to achieve something once he sets his mind on it. I think this is one of the very unique qualities of Arjun that uh, I have seen in very few people, you know. Uh, like in cricket how you have certain characters who would say I'm going to score a 6 off this ball and they do it Arjun has on many instances set targets that he's going to score this many in a tournament and then went on to score exactly that it started with this uh, Tata Steel Challenges 10 and a half out of 13 and then he won this tournament with 9 and a half out of 12 with a round to spare and then he went to the 13th round with full motivation the morning game with the black pieces uh, I think two or three people just drew very quickly, but Arjun sat there grinded his opponent for five, six hours yeah. and scored this 10 and a half of 13. And uh, even in this Olympiad, uh, you know, for fun uh, during the training camp, we asked them how many points he's going to score. And uh, he did some calculation and he came up with eight and a half of 11. And uh, he scored exactly eight and a half of learn. And everyone else was there with it, Hari. It, it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. But when he sets his mind on something, he goes there and gets it. He has this amazing ability. And uh, I find it very unique. Uh, 
uh, I have never seen anyone else who has been uh, who has managed to do this exact same thing, you know, to replicate this to say that they would uh, score uh, so much in uh, a tournament and then go on and do it. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, he has a very strong, a very very strong fiery will to win, and uh, there are occasions where it doesn't happen. He's playing against uh, some of the best in the world. And uh, there are some pawns where it doesn't happen. And those are moments where uh, he finds it very hard to accept that new reality, that things haven't gone his way, the way that he wanted it to. It takes it takes a bit of time for him to adjust. And uh, during those moments, till the time that adjustment happens, it's just pure mental agony. So... Uh, a lot happens emotionally, although he looks calm on the surface. Uh, in terms of uh, internally, he's just, he's just like any other person. What would you say has been the role of his parents? Because not much has been known about them, nor have we seen them at many events. Like I know his mother used to travel at some point, but now uh, she doesn't anymore. So... Uh, have have his parents been there supportive what what has been your experience uh they are incredibly supportive his uh, dad is a doctor he's also a doctor like gokesh's parents nihal's parents but in uh, arjun's case only is the uh, dad is a doctor and uh, he has his hospital in uh, varangal and uh, his mother uh, helps him with his profession his dad's profession so uh, they are usually incredibly busy and uh, although uh, he's quite busy with his own stuff he uh, has uh, he has a lot of passion in arjun's career and uh, i remember uh, immediately after the 2018 olympiad uh, his dad called me up and asked me if i can accompany him to the dubai open in 2019 and uh, at that time, I had to refuse because uh, I was uh, I was with Nihal for uh, some tournament, I think. I don't exactly remember, but I told him that since I'm going with Nihal, I cannot take him at that time. But uh, uh, we stayed in touch and uh, sometime, sometime in 2020 or 2021, again, his dad called me and uh, uh, he basically just asked me to... Uh, take care of Arjun's chess career and let him know whatever was required at any point. And he would take care of whatever is required, but to you know just completely take care of his chess career. And uh, at this point, I was more than happy to uh, do what was possible in my control, uh, give him whatever advice was required. So Arjun's dad was asking me, like, uh, what is required for him in terms of training? What is required for him in terms of tournaments? Should he start working with someone about 2700? And uh, uh, what are the things that are required? All the things. Uh, so, although they, have, they haven't they uh, have traveled a lot to the tournaments and stuff, physically in recent times, they managed to take care of uh, all, all of Arjun's needs both uh, in terms of his chess as well as his uh, uh, general aspects of life. Fantastic. And uh, what would you say has been the role of uh, Westbridge Anand Chess Academy in his uh, chess? Because I, I think Arjun was not the one of the initial mentees in the thing, but I think uh, he was added and uh, has that helped him? Um. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, Arjun was not part of the initial uh, mentees uh, in 2021. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I do remember vividly that I was uh, telling uh, Vishy about Arjun the first time, how incredibly good uh, he is. This was a conversation pattern that happened quite a bit, you know, like someone would ask me about Nihal and uh, uh, if, for example, Nihal was not available for the tournament, I would be like, Nihal is not available, but I know someone who's at least as good and just a year older. And But people simply didn't know Arjun for a very long time. So uh, he wouldn't just get these invitations and stuff for anything. And uh, uh, yeah, so 
similarly arjun also didn't make it to the initial mentees in uh, the west bridge academy but uh, when uh, vishy saw arjun's play at the i think he was uh, impressed from the very beginning uh, again i remember a text from vishy uh, telling me about how impressive arjun is it was something like arjun is very impressive and uh, then uh, he got added uh, to the west bridge academy and uh, i do remember uh, they started playing these training games vishy and arjun and uh, when uh, arjun managed to beat vishy and uh, score pretty well in the training game that gave arjun a lot of self belief and confidence uh, he uh, had, he didn't exactly express it in as much words but it was probably something like if i can beat someone like vishy then i can probably do it against anyone in the world and uh, i think that was a a pretty uh significant mm. boost to arjun's confidence uh since then uh, yeah the group sessions uh, there are there are group sessions with the westbridge academy and uh, in the last in the last few months there ha- they have just been playing a lot of tournaments so uh so since um uh, i think this was this was one of the most uh, important contributions just the training games with vishy i think it takes arjun some time to gain that confidence once he get, gains over it then like for example i remember him playing against magnus at world blitz 2021 and i could see that arjun was a bit tensed yeah at that point and then he drew that game and after that game i i fe- it feels like arjun grows after every sort of a thing uh, while he's doing it he might be a little bit lacking confidence but once he achieves that he knows it and then there is no doubt anymore yes i think arjun has incredible chess skill but for a long time uh, it took it took him a long time to get that self belief going and uh, for example even when magnus told uh, praised his play in uh, the vikanzi and told him that he would uh, get to 2700 in no time again that gave uh, arjun a lot of confidence just hearing those words from magnus himself yeah. and uh, there has been times when uh, the lack of belief itself was uh, a limiting factor like there was this game against ali reza in the last round of the world under 16 olympiad where he made uh, a pretty good quick draw with the white pieces and some 10 or 12 moves and there was absolutely nothing i could do to convince him that he can uh, exert more pressure against aliraza in that game he had just simply made up his mind because uh, he had a pretty bad score against aliraza in uh, the online bullet and other games and uh, uh, so i think he's he's a different kind of beast once he starts believing in himself but uh, there have been moments when uh, he didn't have that belief and uh, that itself became a limiting factor are you surprised that he does not have a full time sponsor yet or does he have uh, one now he doesn't yet uh, have a full time sponsor but uh, i do think it's only a matter of time and uh, to be honest i'm not entirely surprised because he has simply not been uh, all that well known before 2021 he started getting public attention sometime around the may of 2021 and before that he was pretty much out of the limelight and uh, it's understandable from that point of view but uh, i think that's changing right now arjun is just changing things just by the weight of his performances even though he still doesn't speak a lot um, he has let his chest speak for himself itself and uh, with that i think uh, it is starting to change and uh, i feel pretty optimistic about uh, the sponsorship front mm-hmm. absolutely uh, shrinath could we look at one of his games which is your favorite your favorite game uh, there have game? been a lot of uh, brilliant games from arjun especially in recent times but i think one of the games that uh, stood out is his game against domingos the game that took him about 2700 mm-hmm. from the last round of the olympiad 
and uh, arjun was also pretty pleased with that game because uh, i remember he came out and he was like you know i was very happy with this game because normally after the game i would talk to my opponent and tell them where they could have played better but this game i just couldn't find a talking point i just didn't know where he could have played better it was such a clean game amazing let's have a look at it uh this is arjun versus dominguez from the olympiad last round and this helped india actually hold usa 2-2 and it proved to be an important result because it helped team finish fourth and also uh, thanks to it we could win the gaprinda shivili cup because maybe then otherwise uh, usa might have won it uh so it was a, a very important game so arjun absolutely and a very important game also from arjun's uh, personal friend because i think that certainly helped them win the medal right and arjun has been favoring this uh, f3 nimzo yeah uh, like sit yeah uh, this was the last round and uh, i think it was a bit of a surprise that uh, doming was played for us because we were expecting 1 2 3 4 which means uh, fabiano aonia and uh, wesley so and uh, uh domingo is on the fourth board instead they dropped aonia and played sam instead so uh vedit played against wesley instead of aonia arjun played against domingo was instead of uh, uh wesley and uh, sam played against sl instead of uh, domingo was right so i remember we were preparing against uh, the we were preparing against wesley so till 10 to 12 and then at 12 o'clock the board pairings came 12 10 and uh, all the plans kind of started changing a bit since it was a 10 am round uh, i remember uh, we looked at the uh, we looked we looked at what doming was was playing and uh, uh, there were certain openings where we felt uh, he was uh, he hadn't had a lot of games and uh, this was one of the games where it is, uh, i told him basically not to prepare a whole lot just go for this and go and sleep and not check more than one or one and a half hours so he pretty much played this practically and uh, after f3 uh, d5 a3 uh, he played bishop e7 which is i think which was not expected and uh, which is something uh, doming was hadn't played before if i remember right or at least not in recent times so from here on arjun was a uh, kind of in his general preparation right so this was all uh, pretty standard uh, stuff and i think till a point it all seemed normal I think A6 is already uh, not the most common move in this setup. Right, right. Rook E8 is played a lot more often, but yeah. So this is a this is I think one of the most uh, solid options for Black against this F3 Nimzo, and uh, there are uh, uh, many ways to equalize against the open. This is one of them, and uh, within this. Uh, i do remember uh, rook e8 was the main move for a pretty long time mm. but uh, a6 bishop d6 h6 delaying the development of the c8 bishop uh, i think from here on at some point they were uh, pretty much on their own and just playing chess over the board right so rook e8 bishop d3 knight so d3. with h3 and bishop d3 uh, white just takes away the squares from the black slide square bishop f5 is out g4 is out so uh usually the black bishop uh, the light square bishop usually develops to f5 or g4 and this solves black a lot of space problem because once you get that bishop out the b8 knight develops to d7 and then potentially e5 but you have space for your pieces and uh, this e4 control of the e4 square also makes it easier for the black knight on f6 with h3 and bishop d3 uh standard moves but arjun just takes these squares away from black right knight bd7 a4 and i was i was talking to arjun after like i interviewed him and he said that even though the engines show as maybe equal he liked this position a lot 
Yes, I think this is uh, one of the very important and interesting components of modern chess in today's times. The engine brings uh, almost any position to 0.00. I mean, a lot of positions, the engine evaluates it at 0.00, but not all zeros are, uh, you know, equal, equally equal. And uh, a lot of these positions, uh, it's just not easy from a human perspective to understand how exactly it equalizes. Yeah. For, for example, uh, instead of knight bd7, I think b5 is a move that the engine was suggesting. But uh, not not exactly clear if why this is the best move and how. And not, not the kind of move that you would you know instantly think of when you're playing over the board without stockfish. And uh, same thing, knight bd7, a4. And white just has a lot of space. It's not so easy for black to know where to put his pieces. So although it uh, is objectively probably equal and the computer finds and shows the way, if you don't know it, uh, it's not so easy to figure it out all by yourself over the board. Even, even if you are a 2750 plus player. <laughs> yeah, I think the difference between the best, even, even if you're a 2850, <laughs> the difference between the best human and um, the average engine that you use with uh, cloud at your home, the difference is massive. Uh, the difference is incredibly massive, which also brings a lot of human understanding component to how you use engines. Because again, uh, with everything at zero, you can find a lot of interesting things, which the computer shows as zero, but it doesn't understand the, the difficulty level in uh, a human finding those things correct so maybe that's something to work on yeah the co some kind of uh at how, how tough is this equality maybe there can be some kind of a coefficient for that uh bishop c7 rook e1 was played took took queen d6 and already uh around this point um uh, position has probably uh become better for white i think yeah objectivity uh as far as i remember uh, this was the case so black had to play some precise moves between uh move 12 to 16 and when he missed that i think uh, it already got better for white yeah he has this nice pawn on d5 the protected pass pawn and uh, black was uh, uh having a bit of trouble finding space for his pieces so knight went to e2 Queen e7, and now Arjun just exchanged off this bishop. Um, takes. Yeah, he trades the bishop, which was, I think, uh, the piece which was uh, having the best control in Black's camp. The knight on f8 and knight on f6, uh, they don't really have any squares, if you can see. And uh, this bishop on c8 is uh, very well controlled by all the white spaces placed in the light squares. You have the spawns on a4, b3, c4, d5, and a light square bishop as well. So the only square that this bishop on c8 can go to right now is the d7 square. Right. And apart from that, it doesn't have anything. So in uh, essence, this bishop on d6 was the only piece which was controlling a lot of squares in Black's camp. And uh, Arjun just takes it out. Absolutely. So take, take, Bishop d7 and a5. Very nice move. Fixing the structure. Yeah, a very nice move. A typical move. And uh, again, already white has this uh, four pawns on the queen side, the queen side majority. At some point, if he manages to break b4, he's going to have this uh, c pawn also rolling. With a5, he immobilizes the b7 pawn. It's not going to uh, go towards b5 at any point in the near future. And uh, I think white is just strategically clearly better by this point already. Mm. Rookie eight, and here I mean the engines were screaming take the rook, uh, sort of. But uh, Arjun avoided the trade. I think he he wanted to keep the pieces on. Yeah, I think initially it was not uh, entirely clear maybe how uh, incredibly good the end game is, but. Uh, Arjun just figured it out in the 
due course of time and also this question after rook d1 it looks really nice for white you can get that rook back to e1 at any point and black probably has to trade otherwise you will let the rook inside the e5 e7 and uh, till that time you can bring the king to f2 and uh, try and uh, achieve this exchange under better circumstances so i thought practically this was a very uh, natural move to play hmm. bishop c8 Knight d two, knight d seven, knight c three. Knight. I, I, uh, knight was uh, going towards the c five pawn. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you think Arjun plays very well with his knights overall? Like, uh, I mean, it it might be a bit too much of a generalization, uh, but just like how Anand likes his knights, also Arjun sort of maneuvers his knights very well. Yeah, I think he just plays. Uh, excellent he just understands the harmony of pieces very well uh, you saw that with uh, his knight e2 bishop f4 move this knight initially came from c3 but uh, he just sensed that this bishop on d6 is black's best piece uh, these things happen uh, i think kind of instinctively for arjun uh, for others it uh, potentially takes a bit of time i mean when i say others like an average grandmaster you know, the elite uh, other elite players uh it takes a bit of time to understand and make sense of these things but uh, uh for arjun it came instinctively again from a pretty young age even back in the time when he was uh, just uh, about 2500 uh i think he just senses the harmony of pieces very well overall uh including the knights right king f8 king f2 king e7 check now now he understand yeah now he took and and basically if you see here he he also uh, doesn't exchange he lets black exchange so that later on he can put his knight on d3 which which again i think he understands that his knights need to both look at uh, c5 square so that he can push with b4 yeah absolutely g6 king e3 brings his king in and then bishop c2 the knight comes Making up making way yeah. for the d3 i think what you said makes a lot of sense yeah like just sensing the harm i think magnus is right up there when he uh, senses this harmony i think he showed that in the 6th game of his world championship match in a completely super complex uh, material balance he could understand where to put his rook knight two pawns somewhat like uh, that arjun is showing here yeah yeah absolutely yeah, this game was uh, this game is i think like a classic which also reminds me of another interesting thing about arjun when uh, i started interacting with him for the first time he absolutely didn't know much of chess history at all mm. he didn't know many of the legendary players of the past uh including i think uh, a world champion i don't remember but uh, even even if it's a completely popular world champion like botwinik i would uh, first ask arjun have you heard of this person because i wouldn't assume that he knows them already he just absolutely didn't know any of the top players let alone have seen their games from the past and uh, this was a bit of an eye opener for me that uh, someone can be so incredibly strong without studying the classics which would have been uh, something of a cardinal sin when i was growing up uh, not knowing them or not having studied their games but uh, arjun uh, when i saw arjun i started uh, questioning these uh, old beliefs that hadn't been questioned probably in the past and Did you study um, them later the classics i don't think so i don't i don't think so um at least not not in a organized way not in a conscious way as far as i know uh, i think it just showed that uh, it's not uh, only the chess moves matter only your knowledge of chess moves or what's happening in the board i mean it's not about the name behind the moves it's not about the name behind the games but just knowing the chess moves the concepts that that is pretty much all that matters uh, like how alpha zero uh, wouldn't have known any fisher or caspro's games it just played against itself on a chess board and uh, it learned how to play chess mm-hmm. 
human alpha zero uh, <laughs> before and then he got his so yeah it was pretty clear that you had to play before and uh, open up the way for the c pawn and uh, with knight g8 i think it became very clear a uh, very clear way you don't even have to calculate any checks the king comes to d4 to take on b4 pawns on c5 and d5 and uh, i think we are getting close to the 40th move around here the time yeah. control yeah and uh, white was already having some concrete win with d6 and c6 but uh, yeah he had a lot of time he just took his time to calculate a concrete win and i think he finished it off in a very smooth way yeah this was Night uh, basics. just no no uh, chance for dominguez knight e7 yeah knight e7 bishop b7 and now bishop d5 yeah yeah king c5 ah, king c5 first and gives a check and bishop c6 yeah this was check king here and he resigned so beautiful game by arjun uh, and i think uh, just shows and i think through this game we understood a bit more about his playing style uh, and on on a final note uh, you know when you look at uh, when you meet arjun he comes across as a wonderful person kind guy uh, humble down to earth and also he has uh, been helping uh, in social causes since a very young age i i remember for the kerala floods he went to his uh, local government and he contributed 50000 rupees uh, and then whenever we have done fundraisers for any any player he has been there with the highest amount most of the times uh, where does this come from probably his parents mm. it's amazing yeah but he is he is a very helpful person in general whenever i have asked for something uh, he has also been uh, really helpful to divya in uh, especially in recent times with uh, the opening advice the chess advice and uh, you can imagine something from as strong as arjun is uh, it adds a lot of value even if it is just a small suggestion right right so he is very uh, helpful and whatever he showcases and whatever we know of him is his true uh, self so this is absolutely uh, great to know and uh, it's wonderful to know that the guy who is right now india number 2 uh, is also such a wonderful person uh, at core well uh, shrinath uh, knowing about arjun through you has been fantastic uh, what we thought might have been like a 10 to 15 minute talk has gone for an hour but i think uh, people will get to know arjun a lot better through your eyes so thank you so much and thank you for uh, believing in him today he is one of the best in the world and everyone's talking about him but at some point it was you who who found him thank you thank you so much arjun it's uh, sorry uh, thank you so much sagar it's it's an absolute delight uh, to just talk about arjun and his chess and as you saw from his game you can just uh, go you, you can just uh, go on and on about it for a very long time absolutely thanks shrinath thank you